Hi there, my name is Nara. I am a realtor working in Northern Virginia for the last 16 years. And on my channel, in my videos, I try to share my experience and knowledge that I've, accum I've accumulated um, in those years. And uh, today in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, renting versus selling in terms of the whole picture. So um, the reason for this video is because lately I'm getting uh, inquiries from other people um, who are thinking whether they want to sell or rent and I want to share my um, views and my experiences and then you can make your educated decision if you are one of those people and you are now uh, uh, thinking whether you should rent or, or sell your property. So first of all let's talk about selling. It's very pretty straightforward you just put the, mar the house on the market of course you would benefit greatly by working with a real estate agent um, because uh, statistically you get higher price when you uh, utilize a, a good professional agent to represent your interest. Um, that will mean closing costs, that will mean commission, and usually commission uh, is negotiated with the agent, uh, but I would um, recommend calculating for from the conservative standpoint of about 6-7% of expense to sell a home, not necessarily pure commission part, but it, but expense to sell a home because uh, selling a home involves uh, closing costs on your part as a seller as well, uh, not just the buyer's closing costs, um, the recordation fees, the taxes you have to pay. There's a there's a lot of stuff that that it's it's not as high as buyers, but you still have them, and sometimes uh, if the depending on the market. Uh, right now, the market is such that you can uh, get away with not getting, having to do any repairs because the um, inventory is so low that buyers are willing to just buy houses as is. Or um, if the market is a little bit healthier or buyer's market, then you have to think about potential repairs that when the buyer does their home inspection will come up and you will have to, to do. So those are the costs of selling a home. The good news is that we still have the tax deduction of the, the profit from selling a home of up to $250,000 per person or half a million per married couple, provided the property you're selling is your primary residence. And to qualify as a primary residence, you have to live in the property for the last two, for the two out of the last five years, for the two out of the last five years. Um, now. That's selling, right? Whether you're selling or renting, you still have to prepare the house to show it, to market it. So it has to still, you still have to paint it. So a fresh, fresh coat of paint is a, nece is a necessity. Uh, you have to still clean it. You have to make it presentable. So that's kind of the same thing, whether you're renting or selling. And if you decide to rent, you have to make that decision for yourself whether you are emotionally ready for it um, because if, even if financially you have your own mortgage covered uh, by the tenants paying your rent plus uh, whatever expenses you may have you have that covered so you have positive cash flow uh, your mortgage is being paid by someone else it's all great financially renting a property makes great sense um, really because ultimately even if the cash flow is not positive but a little bit on the negative side you still have your bulk mortgage payment paid by someone else now the negative uh, the, the 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 cons of of renting of being a landlord is you have to there's always this thought in the back of your mind what's happening in your house what's what a tenant's doing i i'm i'm speaking from my experience i've i had to make peace with the fact that someone else was living in my home and i had to make myself stop from thinking what are they doing in my home how are they trashing it or how are they using my appliances or whatever may the case may be so you have to kind of let that go you have to be prepared to deal with any potential repairs of the home because somebody else is living in your home. You don't know uh, what's happening there. And uh, any given time, you can get a call or a text message or email saying, sorry to bug you, but this broke or that broke. Um, yes, you can kind of safeguard yourself from big ticket items by purchasing a warranty, but it's still an inconvenience that you have to be ready for. Um, you, the main thing is to, of course, find a good tenant with a good credit history, who, with a good uh, history of renting from someone else, 
who will take care of your property. Um, because if, if, the, if, if from get-go you don't get that type of a tenant, um, you may have uh, problems later on. So whatever you do, make sure you are patient and you pick a tenant who recommend who, who comes highly recommended who uh, has a really good credit score um, and if that means having your property sitting on the market for a while so be it because having to evict a tenant in in Virginia DC or Maryland is a nightmare and you don't want to deal with that it's 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 just it's not pleasant thankfully I haven't had to to do that in my experience but I've I've had clients who had to do that and it's it's really not good um so those are the things and of course you have to maintain your property so you have to make sure that you you do uh periodic inspections of out exterior interior you have to make maybe have some contracts on the property so you do have additional expense of owning a property when you rent it out uh, you do have to add on additional insurance because you are now landlord and property is rented so you do need a higher coverage a higher uh insurance premium um, so uh, I'm trying to think, uh, especially a lot of the time tenants have pets, uh, cats, dogs. So you need to decide whether you're okay with dogs, cats, or whatever the case may be. And again, that's a potential, uh, uh, issue later on from the damage. I had, I had an experience, unfortunate experience where my tenant, very good tenant, she was, she was very, very nice, but she has two older dogs who, um, were at, at the end of their lives and they decided that they couldn't deal with stairs anymore and they decided to make my living room carpet their bathroom. So that was not pleasant. Um, when she moved out, thankfully, she replaced that carpet completely and, uh, you know, the, the, the padding and everything. But you may not have that, that good of a tenant, a luxury of a good of a tenant who's who's decent enough to do that so you would have to apply the deposit it may not be enough etc 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 so emotionally you need to be prepared to be a landlord so those are the things that you need to consider now after years of renting you have to also remember that if you decide to sell in order to save on taxes you will need to sell either as a 1031 exchange for something similar or if you have to sell the property, you will have to pay taxes because it's, it will no longer be your primary residence. So please remember that and keep that in mind. A lot of the time people don't think about it until the time comes and they all of a sudden realize that they no longer can qualify for that tax exemption. And that's a big deal. Uh, I think that's it. If you have something else you want to add to, to the pros and cons of renting versus selling, please comment below. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about anything about real, real estate. Uh, don't get me started. I'll start talking until you pay me to shut up. So uh, fair warning. I hope you find this helpful and interesting. And if you uh, have any other questions or would like me to record some other videos about other topics, please let me know. I will be more than happy to do that. Thanks. Bye.